Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here for the eighth um, dinner event at Wentworth. Uh, those of you who've come here year after year, thank you for supporting us. And those who are new to this event, may I tell you that this is just the beginning of the evening and there's plenty more to come just so that you can come again and again every year. I'm here to tell you about the good bits that uh, we've done and achieved with the treatment of breast cancer. And uh, lately in the news, we've seen that breast cancer survival in the UK has improved by leaps and bounds. Many more women are surviving for decades on after diagnosis of breast cancer. And that is what we want. When I do see a new patient with breast cancer, they're terrified, they're apprehensive, and one would understand that because they don't know what I know. And my objective with the newly diagnosed patients with breast cancer is that they live their normal lifespan. And I always get a smile from the patient at the moment when she's most terrified by saying, I want you to live a little old lady. Uh, up to, and, and that is how we want you to die of old age, not because of breast cancer. And on my table, my very good friends, um, Dick Ashford and Tony Neal, they're here, they're the oncologists I work with very closely, and they help us in giving patients a good quality of life, but also, more importantly, extended survival. So it's not all doom and gloom. We, we win uh, more often than not. Uh, it is sad that uh, Jackie Cleghorn um, uh, died this, this week, and in part, I would say, Lorna, that we're here to celebrate Jackie's life. We're here to, to celebrate her great courage, because when she came to this event two years ago, we thought it was touch and go. But it is the courage of Jackie that kept her going, and look at that, how she fought, and it's fitting that my charity called Fight Breast Cancer, uh, on this occasion, I dedicate it to her and her spirit. Yeah. Fight Breast Cancer was launched last year and we've raised significant amounts of uh, funds, uh, thanks to your generosity uh, when we were here last in, in um, summer last year. The charity has an aim to overcome the challenge of breast cancer and it has a threefold approach. Firstly, we aim to buy state-of-the-art equipment and over the years you've supported um, my initiative, firstly in the form of the Ashford and St. Peter's uh, Breast Fund and through that money which Lorna and her committee have been able to give to us, we have bought many bits of equipment that are vital in our day-to-day -day surgery. Um, many of you have contributed to us purchasing light retractors, and these are uh, retractors with light at the end. And because I like uh, the idea of small scar surgery or scarless breast surgery, because remember, my objective is patients live for many, many years, and decades after they've been cured virtually of their cancer, you don't want them to suffer a daily reminder by looking down on their scars. And so the objective is to place the scars, hide them, minimize the scars, so everybody can forget that they ever suffered this ordeal. So for minimal scar breast surgery, it would not be possible without the use of the light retractors, and it increases the visualization for surgeons. So that's what your money has gone towards purchasing, and we need about six or seven per operating uh, day, simply because we need to turn them round, and they have been distributed at various hospitals, both private and NHS. We've also managed to purchase uh, uh, laser lymphedema uh, probes, and again, it's not been used widely. It was here because of your contributions that I was able to purchase laser probes, and these have been used to control the swelling of the arm that some patients may get after surgery. Again, we've bought at least six or eight of these distributed at various points so that no patient has to wait um, weeks on end to take the probe because we teach them how to use it at home and it's something useful they can tackle on their own. 
We've also bought other retractors. So there's a self-retaining ChefMed retractor, which is a wonderful piece of equipment because it, it is like a robotic arm and you can um, carry out surgery independently without the help of an assistant because as you know, junior doctors are now rotated in and um, they're very protected. So their training has to be rigorously controlled, which means they may not be available uh, on the unit as often as they used to be. Where, and the chef med works instead of a junior doctor. And so there it is with prongs and uh, doesn't answer back, doesn't flag, doesn't get tired. A wonderful piece of equipment, cost us nearly 20,000 pounds, but worth every pound. We've also bought a uh, BioVision product, which is our latest acquisition. And this helps us to look at the tissue specimen straight away uh, in theatre when we're doing the operation. And we can look at the edges and see whether we've removed sufficient tissue or not. And it saves the patients having a second operation. So as far as equipment can go, we want to buy the latest piece of equipment for our patients. Um, one new addition has been the portable ultrasound, which has been purchased. And again, this portable ultrasound will help us uh, carry out our operations safely, quickly, and efficiently. Um, from the event today, we hope to buy a lipofilling gadget. Uh, this is used for grafting, and this is the one time I can tell patients uh, not to lose weight, and I encourage them to go for that Kit Kat because we can use patients' own fat to reconstruct the breast. And that's very exciting because it's simple, easy, and we have 100% agreement from women. So, but I understand today we're not taking any donations for the people's own fat. We just want the money. Um, the other thing that we uh, want to do with the Fight Breast Cancer Charity is to raise funds, as Lorna said, to allow patients to live a fulfilling life. And to lead a fulfilling life, we need to look after patients when they are the most vulnerable. And so we've launched the Tranquility Sanctuary, which will be in the premises of the Runnymede uh, Hospital. It's in a private setting, so easy parking um, and not too many crowds because sometimes patients want to avoid too many people around. And we've got it free of charge from the Runnymede Hospital, so thanks to them. Um, but equally, it would offer patients the opportunity to be pampered, um, something that in the midst of all this heavy-duty treatment, one forgets. So pampering patients through treatments, be it aromatherapy, uh, hairdo, manicure, uh, reflexology, whatever it takes to just get the smile back on their faces. So that is one of the objectives. And the third thing, as we all know, and it was alluded to by my colleagues here, is about research. Without research, we, we can't hope to move forward. And our aim was to look at the genetics in a small way, because we were collaborating with Royal Holloway University. And one of our latest projects is to look at our cancers that we've dealt with in 2004, which brings us up to 10 years. And all those patients who had breast cancer, we want to retrospectively look at those patients and see what particular characteristics um, made them survive the cancer and whether we can translate it to patients who are being diagnosed with cancer now. So that's a very interesting and exciting study um, and it will be funded again through the funds that we raised this evening. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I will let you um, enjoy the rest of the evening and I would make one request that is be generous as you always are. And let's raise a record amount of money this evening and I promise you, I'll put it to good use. Thank you. <laughs>